so uh, to recap what we did yesterday, um, we'll go back a little bit of what I did, but the main objective of doing this little bit is to uh, uh, fill in the gaps, really, that I uh, should have thought about putting in yesterday. Nevertheless, uh, we've made a we've made a basic background there, look, and it's and we, and we do it with one of these pencils, which I forgot to mention. It's a Stabilo. It's it's a, a, a writing on glass, really. It's a China graph pencil. If you write on anything, you can wipe it off. You can rub it off after you've done so. It's, they're very very good for uh, determining where you're going to put things. So, um, having painted the green ones uh, yesterday, these look a bit messy because um, these are not the ones that were done yesterday. They were done quite a while ago, but nevertheless, they are basically the same. So, we're going to get some yellow paint, uh, and we're going to, what they're called, you, can you um, see down here what I'm doing with this yellow paint? Um, it, what we call, it's called palleting really. The whole idea is to load the brush with the paint. S simple as that, okay? And I'm going to quickly emphasize again what the, this brush will do. Thick. And uh, right down. Okay, imagine, imagine painting a fish. From looking down on a fish, right? Can you imagine doing that? And then add in a little bit. Oh, and there he is. There's Bob the fish. So, having done the green yesterday, we are now going to add the little bits that go in the leaves. The idea is of putting this on the leaves is to actually start on the outside for the middle stroke and then add a couple like that. And then do the same for here and try not to make them all exactly the same otherwise you will it'll look square too square too symmetrical so when that one faces in the middle maybe try to make that one so it faces that way understand and this is the same brush again and this one to go a little bit more like that, like that, like that. it's similar to that one but it's not the same the whole thing will look better and then we can go back to there if you want, don't worry about these strokes being perfect. It doesn't really it matter and it won't be that critical. So there we are, we've got all these um, yellow bits in the leaves. I've got the round bit. These leaves are uh, obviously important to be there because they're part of the tradition. But, um, but they, they into insignificance really when you manage to get some roses in there and daisies then they quickly fall into the background so there's a brush and I, while I'm there I'll put a yellow center you can do it quite thick if you want and that way it's uh, yeah I'm, I'm doing what to uh, Phil Spate would say titivated and um, and Dave Moore would say just gob it on. The traditional painters didn't have time to mess about. They had to get a boat out, out earning money, didn't they? So we've got here, we've got drawing it out, we've got putting the leaves on, we've got putting a blue disc on there with a blue centre and yellow. Then we move on to doing the background bit and for that I'm going to switch the board over hopefully it doesn't duck to something there we are switch it over turn it over turn it round and in true blue Peter style there's some I prepared earlier I'm now going to do um, the yellow because I've got yellow on my brush I don't normally do yellow first, but it won't matter. We're going to do yellow and the red. Normally I do a red first. There's a reason for that. But we'll paint a, we'll paint a, no, paint a, uh, yeah. Not going to, I'm not going to do this at all, am I? I don't know why I said I would. I'm going to go back, step back a little bit. We're going to do this in a little while. Firstly, 
I'm going to give the brush a quick swizzle and just put it in the thinners for now. And quickly clean off the shit off there. It'll all mix in. And uh, there we are. We're now going to do some backgrounds, not petals yet. I was very much ahead of myself, but it's fairly obvious by now you'll realise. Well, I don't normally make videos, do I? Not very good at it, maybe, but at least you'll get the gist of what I'm doing. So, in these two little pots, which have been filled in turn from Craftmaster Paints. Thank you, Adam. I'm, I'm hoping I'll get some discount for the plug here from Craftmaster and Company. We're now going to paint some centres for the background, sorry, for what will become white roses. I'll do a couple of these because it, it's quite important that they dry a little bit. And we go around like that using this one stroke brush. As you can see, it's my one stroke it does. It's flat one way and it's thin the other. So you can actually do go like that. You can go like that. You can go like that. That's an exaggeration, but it does allow you to uh, do all sorts of squiggly bits like that if you really wanted to. So that, and it, equally it'll go small, small as well, but nevertheless. So now we've got the pink out of the way, we've now got the red, which is the best red. we've got, we use bright red sometimes, bright red is a slightly darker. This is more orangey than anything else. And using this as we, now, another important thing I want to remember is to decide which way these are painted. We'll have that one going that way, that one going that way. So you can put that little arrow in there because you can wipe it off later. And then we literally put, sat at the edge, that's at two o'clock, and follow it round like that and blend it in a little bit as you go and then add the middle and we have a blend a little bit so it's not boring uh, secondly we're going to put one uh, the other way but we'll do a different one slightly where we've got this is going to be an open rose so we do it like that as you can see We've got two different types of backgrounds, so that's the background that will become the white rose, like that. And we've got backgrounds that will become red roses, and some that will become yellow roses. But we'll give, give this a quick, quick squish, put the tops on the paint, and grab two more colours, which will be from our little collection here. We're going to use... We're going to use orange and we're going to use brown. By the way, when you do the red, well, I've got a red in my hand, you do the little bits in the middle of there, look. Just a blob. All it does is help you emphasize the center of the flower. Got very little paint on there now, but nevertheless, you can get the gist of what you do. So you're not wasting time. Put your finger on it. Won't really matter with it, and uh, there we are. So you've got, you've got, all oh, got those. So now we've got orange, and we're going to have brown. So we'll clean that brush out again and give it a quick swish, and we'll finish with two brushes, which are not necessarily as clean as I would like, but they are cleaner than they would be otherwise. So now we've got orange which we do, are going to create a yellow centre and it's basically the same again there's the yellow orange one that will come, don't titty right about as Dave Moore would say to me gob it on it's all about spontaneity and creativity apparently Rumour has it. So we've got two backgrounds there 
and then we'll go to the brown which is there which in turn will do we'll get this one put into the way like that blend in that and then put a center there blend it a little bit these are probably not some of the better centers I've done but they are there and we could do another one of those if you want that, that one will face the opposite way there we are now at some point or other you're expecting me to do an upside down one aren't you I can do an upside down one but the chances are that the only time I will ever do an upside down one is if I was painting a boat because unless you uh, fancy getting wet you can't turn a boat upside down but other than that if you, if you want and especially while you're learning you're trying to tr you don't take on a technique that you need lots of practice to get just do that look and you can do one the other way up if you want can't you so the next background to do is for the red rose which in turn will envisage entail I should say entail using uh, some brown again brown again if it's the right consistency and brown why well, do you got the brown put the middle in there look can you see that ah oh, look at that look you can do that now you've got the back that's beginning to look like, like it. Right, for the brown background, for a red one, I'm going to do this one, look, I'm going to do that one now. Look. There's one, again. And we'll do another one, which we can do upside down. Because you can swirl this if you want, do it like that, go a little bit wider. And do it like that. And do the middle bit. Now the black bit. This is important but well before I do the red I'm just going to go back to the this now and we need to put a dark bit around the edge of there a dark bit around the edge of there a dark centre like that and then do the same with the white one I didn't used to do this but my friend and mentor Phil Spurt said they look better and uh, for once in my life I agree with him um, jokingly of course now now we've got these red what we'll do what we'll do is we'll do uh, we'll do one first in that way okay that's going to become it's better to let the brown dry a little bit more than the rest because it tends to take it better there we are now we've got that done Quite quick, rough, but it, but it, but it's effective. And then we're going to do this one. And we're going to do that like that. And we're going to do it like that. So you can paint the backgrounds upside down. That doesn't take very long to learn at all. And while we've got the black, we'll put a black bit in the middle of there. We cut a little bit on there if you want. Don't forget, I haven't got the yellow bits on there because. I showed you how to do them earlier, didn't I? So there we are. We've got the backgrounds for the white rose. We've got the backgrounds for a yellow rose. And we've got the backgrounds for red roses. And, again, Blue Peter style. Here's some I did before, look. And I'm white. But they've got the right bits on them. So now, I'm going to very quickly clean that off. Throw the brush in there. Along with that one. And I will clean them later when I've finished. And another thing that's very important to understand is that when you clean brushes, I, I clean mine. I clean mine my way. Just like Frank Sinatra. And I did it my way. I tend to do mine like this. Normally, I'll, go, I'll just quickly show you. In through four little pots, look. They're actually cat food tins, but can you see there, look. So, and then I do it in the second one and wipe it with a rag. 
but I'm just using for convenience today some tissues because after three you can see after three one two three yeah, after three you can see that there's no paint in there we'll put it in there for now and then give that away get rid of that so we're nearly there for today in fact we're nearly there forever forever if we play our cards right we are now going to do some red roses I want some red roses for a blue lady I think the song goes but never mind today we want some red roses and that's a messy messy mess mess that I uh, didn't ever get rid of the skin off there and it happens but as you can see it's a hole you see what, what you see is what I get warts and all eh? so I remember watching Phil the Phil's video the first thing and he had a cold and a gravelly voice well what a coincidence isn't it well here we are then there's a the red and it's all and you can feel that the paint that was good so we won't do those because they're still a bit too wet let's do one here look I can do it on there if I want we're going to start here again and just do that one then you're going to chuck this one in there look not the best red rose I ever did by a mile is it but never no, you'll get the gist of what that one should be around a bit a bit more then we'll do it one from that side like that and uh, yeah it's not brilliant, but it's not no point in rubbing it out, is there? Um, I hope, kind of hope, that that brush will be better than that. Let me just clean that one off a bit. Clean this one off. Just for you. And you need the best brush. Red again. Clean the brush. Put some red paint in there. And we'll do a red again. Now we'll do a red. Here, look. This is... I kind of like this one, but I think this is Phil's Rose, this one. I do it because I like it like that. And that tucks in there. And these go one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Nine, you can do a bit there if you want, and do a little bit, give it a little bit of depth. So we've got, I'll do one more in red because I've got the background done. So we'll try it. It's an old, here's one I don't do too often, but I'll do it anyway, provided I don't mess a mess, make a mess of it. it. It's two strokes down like that. One, two, come sir. Then you chuck that in there, and then you turn the brush and do that like so and then you can do those underneath you see what I mean that's it's another different style so so we've done three at least three different ones we've got different ones for different things and I'll try one more before I just go back to ordinary ones so um I'll go back to this one and do a uh, this one. And then two strokes like that. Like that. Forgetting to bring them to a point, but never mind. And then curl that round like that. Like that, like that. Put that in there, that in there. And the final one underneath. Then you have to fill a little bit in there. So that's red. All done, and uh, we're waiting for them to dry. And now I'll do the yellow, and I was going to do before, and uh, do it in a separate little bit of there. Uh, I'll put that right away. I don't need it, I don't think. But now we'll go to yellow. It's not my favourite colour, this, because it doesn't seem to cover enough. It seems to be too thin most of the time. Even though I stared it up, I'll stir it again. I don't think it'll stir any thicker than that. And it all went in there consistently, but... The beauty of it, this stuff, isn't it? Because it dries so quick, it seems a bit thin. 
There's a top off for a bit. But we'll, I'll give you the gist of how to do a yellow rose, which is here, and we'll go one stroke like that again. Two, one, two, three. And then we'll tuck one in there, look, and go around like that. And then this, these are. These are Dave Moore roses. I call them Dave Moore roses because he taught me how to do them. He might be watching this thinking, they're not my roses. Well, if I made a mess, Dave, I'm sorry, but that's how I've done it for now. So we'll do. And we'll do a different one here, but if you want, we can just go. Start at two o'clock, and didn't start off pretty good with that one, but now we have one, two, three, tuck that in, and that in. And then we'll start there, and we'll go around like that in one stroke. My grandson Alfie loves this rose for some reason. He said it's like a swan burning winter, when it's back again. So there we are. And while we've got the yellow, we go around these and we put those. One big one and little ones if you can. And you would do that one as well because you're going to paint it later. But when you put the diamonds in, all of a sudden, it's got a little bit of all life to it, hasn't it? So you could, I would add them to all of those. So, so before I paint the white, Let's put them in there. I'll do a, a long one with that one. I'll probably put too much black shading on these, but but for now, that's fine. So we've done the red, we've done the yellow, and in the last, but not least, we're going to do the white. I've got this tissue because it's easier to clean up quick, if you know what I mean. But I have to be careful here, otherwise, this white rose will be pink. And pink roses are not what I do. I don't do pink roses. Um, I don't paint animals either. But so we give that a very good, good rip of clean. And the brush. Get rid of all the yellow off this as quick as we can. And so all these little pots. And I've got another one here for good measure. We're on the final stage, which is white. So ignoring that. Lose it. There we go. On the last bit. But you're all fed up already, aren't you? Right. There we go. So again, craft master paint. It's enamel paint. It flows beautifully. Can you see that? Look, it flows. The brush glides through it. And then, and we've got a full brush. We then paint a white rose, which is going to be like this. One, two, three. These are, I always find them when actually doing them too quick, so you don't really see how they should be done properly, but we're doing like this. And adapt your strokes to suit yourself. There we are, there's a white one. And here's the other one, we know. This is a, this is a fill rose. I think he actually tried to steal the idea from somebody else. But when he got back to his workshop, he'd actually forgotten it. So he tried he did it as he tried to remember and then ended up creating his own. Which is what a lot of people do. You make a mistake and suddenly there you are. So that's not exactly well balanced. That one should be around there, but I'm not going to change it now. And then we'll do we'll do another standard one which is down like that. Oops, try not to dribble. That's what happens. Dribble paint everywhere, but well, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. And Agony City, I suppose. There we are. Look. So we'll do a one, two, three. A bit scraggy, these are roses, aren't they? I'm afraid, but they'll give you the gist of what it's trying to do, won't they? Like that. 
um, and like that. You can do them as open or as close you like. But there we are. They're roses. Um, as I say, not the best I've ever done, but when the white's out, you then go around the yellow and you cover every single petal that you did on the yellow, like that. Try to get a bit of something to it, and then uh, put, and then the white goes in the middle of the yellow. The other ones have yellow in the middle. So that's how it, and then basically that's your yellow rose finished. Mm. But when you've got a bunch of these, believe you me, they look all right. They will look all right. Bit rushed today, so there we are. And this is the white one. Ignore that messy one underneath that I drew up paint on. And this with the red, don't do every other one. Don't do every one, do every other one, just to give it so it doesn't stand out too badly against the others. Now I've managed to put brown in there, but it doesn't matter. So we'll get this paint, so now it becomes a little bit more liquidy. And what about the daisies then? Well, I'll try and exaggerate these a bit if I can. Well, there's many ways of doing these. Uh, many, many ways of doing it. And, and is, well, if you look through enough books, you'll find them. So the idea is to you press down, like that. Try to keep the same distance away, all the way around like that. And then, the same there, look. Always trying to go to the middle. And you'll find that as you practice more, um, you will find that. Some people start to curl them in a little bit by starting over there a little bit more, are you with me, like that and then curl them in, and then at the very end. Now, this is where you have to paint upside down. Don't be silly. We're not going to do that because because you won't do that, will you? You won't be able to paint upside down. I can paint upside down, but if I did, I'd just be showing off, wouldn't I? So we just turn it over and continue with this circle, press and drag, and you believe you may keep them as close as you can, and there you are. And again, we're nearly there now. I'm ready for a brew. Um, and there we are. So, so, if you're wondering, have I got a narrow boat? The answer is no. Will I have a narrow boat? Hopefully, yes. But for now, we are what? Dave Moore calls us gongooslers, or um, more to the point, bridge shoppers. We've been on and seen nearly every canal in the countryside, and we've seen every attraction, including the Sterling Wheel, which is Falkirk Wheel, we've seen the Anderson Boat Lift, we've seen the Pont Casilta, we've seen all of those things, and one day, hopefully, when we retire for good, We'll do that, and of course there is a different, slightly different one that you can do, and, it, and, it, and this is your own style. You just do that, 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 and that. And as I say, not again, not the best I ever did, but and it, you can point them in any way you like. But in the scheme of things, and then twizzle your brush so it gets to a point, and then you can just put these dots on. If you want, I've seen them without dots at all, but I prefer them. It's a flat, but there we are. So that's it basically. Now, I'm going to clean the brushes uh, several times, and then when I clean the brushes, I'm going to put them in grease. And that way, they will keep, when I come to pick them up again, be it tomorrow, next week, next month, I'll be able to pick them up and continue where I left off. So, again, thank you for watching. That's it. Bye for now.